So for me, it's the first time I held my whole presentation. Maybe one of uh, or a lot of people here now that know knew this presentation from the EOA. So I add some next steps uh, uh, to this uh, slides. Not too much slides. So in Germany, we have a well, we have a in the German labor market, we have a transition in the last 13 years. We are coming from 4.5 million unemployed persons, and now we have only 1.5 million in 2018. And the last unemployment rate in Germany for the second quarter of the year 2019 was 2.9%. Uh, so I think uh, it's not possible to go down more than that. But now the challenges in the labor market are different from uh, the years 2005 or 2006. Uh, the sort of shortage of manpower is now in different occupations, not a total, uh, so we are not able to find uh, people for construction or something like it. And the impact of structural change is even harder to the German economy because we do not find people who can um, well, have the right occupation for uh, maybe uh, uh, information or communication services or something like that. So, the Ministry of um, German, the Labor, uh, Ministry of Labor in Germany, uh, give us an, uh, well, a project, and we talk about it, and we have to make uh, presentations on the regional level also, and we must have uh, find uh, balances for every for every occupation. In Germany, it's about 144 occupations. We must have the supply side and the demand side. It's not so easy. So we are together in a huge uh, group with two um, well, official uh, institutions, uh, the Bundesinstitut der Berufsbildung, it means occupation, and the Institute, Institute, Institute für Arbeitsmarkt und uh, Berufsforschung, Labor Market and uh, Occupation. So on this project is called Kuba project because the German um, words would, would be qualification and Berufe. Berufe means occupation. So it would be uh, not Kuba but Ku Ok in English. Sounds not so fine. So the Inforge model is expanded to Ku Inforge coming from uh, Kuba. This Ku Ku Inforge and here's an overview. It uh, depends on, uh, it has four parts. The first part is the demographic module. And the demographic model, we are able to uh, build uh, the immigration to Germany from 150 countries uh, coming to Germany. It's important because of their uh, education they bring with them. So, on the one side, we're able to distinguish between um, uh, female and uh, male and female, yes, of course but we can distinguish between persons with a German nationality or different. And uh, yes, all the same, but immigration is very important for Germany because the, we have an immigration about one billion, uh, one, yeah, one billion a year. It's very high. I think it's higher than the United States. So we look at that. The second module is called the education module. It depends on demographic change, of course, we, we can model schooling, uh, vocational training is typical German, vocational training and studies, persons leaving the education system and we allocate them to uh, certain occupations. The module in the middle of the whole uh, uh, C, uh, Kuhnforge, we call it occupational flexibility. This means that I'm an economist and I work as an economist. But some of you maybe have learned something else and now you're working as an econ economist. Now you are flexible, you have learned something and do something else. And it's, uh, this flexibility uh, depends on your age, if you are male or female and what you have learned. So we have a lot of information about that. This module has about uh, 0.7 million equations. So we have an impression about the number we uh, use here. And last but not least, uh, in Forge, uh, gives to this uh, total model the demand um, of uh, sectoral level and uh, the aggregated level and for 144 occupations. So but what is important is that the demographic change influences both sides of the model, the supply side and the demand side. And if you look at the picture, do not read it, but uh, you see that the demographic change 
on top of the picture and it goes to the educational system on the left side, we call it labor supply, and on the right side we have the labor demand coming from the economic model in Forge, and in the middle of it is a, flexi a flexibility model. So we are able to uh, compare the supply side and the demand side, and here you see, here we are able to compare it, the matching between 400 to 144 uh, occupations. So, num uh, what are we... Oh. What have I done? Ah, oh, yeah, one more. So, looking at the, um, the model a bit closer, uh, what we are going to do, we are uh, estimating demand functions, uh, manpower defined functions. This one? Yeah. No. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, volume of work, we use production, wages, prices, and the trend for each sector. And what you see now, that uh, we have uh, three influences uh, from, uh, to the volume of work, the demanded volume of work, and the wages, and inforce depends on overall wages and nominal production for each sector. If you are able to earn more in a sector, you are able to pay more to your uh, employees. Uh, the second component is our prices. We calculate prices by unit costs, unit costs for um, uh, labor, for uh, uh, the depreciation, and uh, for intermediate demand per unit. And the third component is production, and, and production it depends, uh, well, the input output model depends on intermediate demand, consumption, investment, exports, and imports. But all these components are linked together. So you are not quite, you are not able to tell you before you run the model what will come out of it. And what you see here, we do not have a function for productivity. Productivity is a result of the model, we do not put it into it. Second, how do we get information about the 144 um, occupations? Uh, we use uh, the, every occupation has its own wage and every sector has its own wage. And the combination, the relative uh, wages of the sector here and the um, occupation we use in the estimation function. We use the volume of work in the sector and we use the trends. So we have uh, about, well, I don't know, 7,000 uh, functions to solve here. We do it automatically. It's not so, it's not so bad, very fast. <laughs> So some results, um, you see here the working population in Germany while well, it was going down until the year 2011, going up and now going down again. And you see the labor force, uh, uh, we have a difference about 80 million people between the working population and the labor force starting in 1991. And in the middle of this period, in 2012, 15, 16, we have only a 13 million difference, and now we will have in the future only 10 million difference between them. So uh, the shortage from the demographic side is very strong in the future. If you look at the labor force and the employed person, here you have uh, the gap. This is the gap is uh, the unemployment, the number of unemployed. And I have talked about the year 2005, it's about here, we have uh, 4.5 million unemployed persons and now we are more or less here, we have only 1.5. So the future in Germany is not um, that we have a, a shortage of jobs, but we have a shortage of uh, people who are going to work. So, and so the future you see is more uh, parallel between both factors, uh, components of the labor market. This is important because um, prices, uh, wages are rising very strong to be able to uh, show this picture. So in Germany it was, we have 10 years or maybe more after the year, uh, unification of Germany, we have a long period of low wages and now since 2015 wages increase very strong. You can see it when you look at labor costs, the unit costs of labor are rising. Um, faster than uh, production is growing. Now we look on uh, construction. It's uh, very famous in Germany now to talk about construction because construction uh, we must build, uh, well, I think more than 
one million flats in the next two years, and we have not enough people doing that. So we have a, we have rising rents um, on the construction market. But uh, the, what we have we have the problem that the supply side nobody is going to learn an uh, occupation in the construction sector. They do, they like to sit in the bureau uh, making something like information communication or something like it. No one is going to learn about construction. So in the future, in the future, the number of people working in the sector will go down. And to see the importance to the whole economy is uh, shrinking from 4% to 3.5% uh, on the labor market. After 2020, the number of persons construction occupation shrinks uh, more, not dramatically, but it shrinks uh, due to demographic change. If you look at demand side, that's the fourth component, you also see that the, uh, the, number, uh, the number of persons uh, who are needed to work in the construction sector it goes down, but it goes down due to the number of households. After 2020, the number of uh, the demographic change took place the number of uh, people will go down and the number of households won't rise anymore as, as strong as in the last five years. So the consequence is that the investment in the construction is lower than today. So the demand will go down. But if you see, we have a, well, it's a lucky uh, coincidence. On the one side, the supply side will going down and on the other side, uh, the demand side also go, go down. Now, if you look at uh, product, uh, productivity measured in, um, uh, measured in uh, hours per constructed production, uh, hours uh, of work uh, to production uh, in constant terms, you see that we have two periods. We have here a period where the productivity uh, does not grow because we have low investment in construction. We have um, well, a lot of unemployed person. And now in the future it will be the same, a different production is higher, it's about the average level, if you exclude this period, about the average level 1% a year, because we have a shortage in the supply side and in the demand side, so with low investments but very low unemployment. So the development of productivity depends on the final demand and the results of the labor market. So some, not the last page. <laughs> uh, some, <laughs> I've known that. Um, demographic development is very, very important to both sides of the labor market, to both sides of the model. If you are not able to combine the both information, you are maybe a mislead because of the um, uh, things you see in the results. It's a lot of that. Oh, one more. The job specific aging, specific aging and the career people take or will have in the future is important to what the result for the labor market will be. And the construction industry shows that maybe it's, uh, it fits together, maybe not. So this was a, was a IIOA, a part of the, but now in uh, some months, uh, well, it was in July, so no, two months ago. Until then, we have finished our regional model for uh, the, uh, at the regional level. We have uh, 34 regions in Germany, and this, uh, these regions are defined by minimal commuting between the regions. So one region is a region if you have, uh, well, go not to work to the other region, so minimal Region. Why are we going to make, or why must we um, uh, calculate uh, 34 regions? Because we, uh, we assume that the disparities between regions will grow in the future. For the time now, we have a very great disparities in Germany, and we think in the near future they will grow on the one side, or the ministry thinks they will grow. And on the other side, the structural change have different, has different impacts on the countries, on the regions we are looking at. If you are ever, um, well, if you have machinery production or something else, you will not profit from, uh, from information communication. So maybe you are less, uh, you produce less in the future. 
And on the other side, we now start, well, I've, heard, I've learned about, about a lot about uh, multi-regional IOTA every today. It's nice to hear that uh, Inform tries to incorporate it into the Inform models. I think it's very, very important because what we use, we use a shift share approach to build uh, um, regional models. It's different. We come from the input side, not the demand side of the I.O. model. So the next step will be that for 16 countries, we are able to build a regional input output model. We have learned from the Chile pro project, and I think Annette Grossman works at the, with the Chilean uh, input output matrix now. And uh, on the other side, we also have the problem to incorporate more data than now. Uh, we call it the bridge between macro and micro data. And we are always asked, how are you able to have, we have a survey, are you able to put the survey to your model? Or we have big data, how to incorporate big data into an I.O. model. And uh, if you look at uh, what you see in the I.O.A. conference, they all have the impression that uh, surveys are um, uh, important. And so uh, it's also very important to go down to, region, to a regional level to have an well, adapter to uh, different surveys or whatsoever. So, I will show you a short, um, give you a, a short information about the flows of information in the regional model. So we have the demography for 34 countries. There's a projection until the year two, uh, 2035. And we have uh, 37, 37 sectors for each region. And you can bring, can build three groups more or less. There's a group of sectors, some services and goods. For the for public interest, interest in Germany, in Germany we call it Daseinsvorsorge, but uh, there are um, medical services, for example, you have um, education services, something like that, and they depend very strong on the demographic change in the region. You have um, the second kind of uh, industries, you know, or they are they have international or national markets, machinery or something like that. And there's a third group of uh, sectors driven by the other ones. But what's the, what is the problem? And we think about that, because of that, we think about the I.O. modeling on the regional level. There are um, the problem that maybe you, have, uh, you, you produce machinery, but the services you buy in a different region. So the interlinkages between the regions they are very important for a model like that. We use, we, we, we try to incorporate this, um, um, this uh, information into the equations using um, some information from, uh, from the total I.O. model, saying that if you are working in an uh, uh, information communication sector, you need uh, customers uh, nearby. So, and then we are incorporated to the uh, estimation functions. But it's not so, well, it works. The estimations are not so bad, but it's not, you are not able to track uh, the flow back to some initial uh, demand somewhere. <coughs> but we are able to make some, well, some nice looking pictures. And here are some results of the QMOR model. QMOR stands for uh, Kube, and MORE stands for monitoring. Regional monitoring, monitoring regional. Remo was not so good. We use more, 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 more. It sounds better than that. And what you can see that in Germany, here you have the, the labor uh, supply side. Berlin is uh, growing very fast, and you have uh, Munich, München is growing very fast. And on the other side, here are some regions in um, the east of uh, Germany. You see here decline, and they decline very fast in the, in the last uh, 10 years, and they will do it in the future because of demographic change. And now if you look at the IT sector, it's very important, uh, we believe in Germany, it's very important for the future development of Germany that we are able to, uh, uh, well, to uh, give some uh, new um, products in, uh, in IT services uh, to uh, work we are looking at the United States, maybe we are able to give, uh, have some uh, cooperation like them in the future. 
but I don't think it will, it will work. But uh, if you look at the IT sector, it will grow in Berlin and it will grow near München. So there yeah, are some regions now that have uh, a rising supply side and a rising demand side. And there are some, region, uh, some regions in Germany that have a declining supply side and a declining demand side. <laughs> so the disparities will grow between the regions. So last but not least, um, I think we think uh, that is uh, in the near future, I all model where we're facing new challenges because of the huge amount of data we will find in the internet or somewhere else. And uh, it's often that we are uh, must integrate microdata into the input output models. But um, from our point of view, it's possible because we use uh, Inforge as an economic landscape. So you must only put your finger on this map and find the concrete point and every data you can put into the uh, input output model as done for cross-section analysis or so we have done for corporate data so whatsoever. And I think it's um, um, then after you find the position in the input output matrix, you can tell the, uh, the position makes, uh, gives you information about the, uh, the re uh, relative change to the GDP. It's very important for politicians to say we have three points of GDP going to care or something else, medical care or something else. And what we can see for, from today, I've had some um, countries here from Russia, China, USA, Italy, we know that it's possible. And uh, the other thing, you must say that internet, intertime is possible to incorporate a huge amount of data. You not only, uh, I think it's very hard to fill uh, every worm file until it will burst. So I think in the future uh, we will have more data and I think we are able to use this huge amounts of data for the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. We have time for questions. Oh, thank you very much. It was very interesting for me because uh, we did uh, something very similar to you in the past yeah. and also now we are working on similar um, research. And uh, I want to give you my experience about this uh, um, issue, uh, the aging population. Uh, we have, um, I, I want to do, um, before this, the question, I, I want to um, say something about your model. We have something very similar in Italy. Uh, I don't understand if you have a micro simulation model. Uh, we, we have a micro simulation model to simulate the uh, participation rate. Uh, okay. And thanks to the micro simulation model, we change the demographic structure of the population and also the level of education of the population. And then we combine yeah. macro and micro um, to, to have uh, a simultaneous simulation. Yes. And we have uh, very similar results uh, about the unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, our problem in Italy is uh, that we have uh, a high level of unemployment, but in the future, uh, the problem disappeared. Uh, just because uh, we have a labor force that uh, will decline in the future uh, due to the aging population. Um, my question is, uh, for us in Italy, uh, the main problem is that uh, the aging population produced a large impact on the budget of the public administration. Yes. And uh, <laughs> I would like to know if you have some uh, forecast about your uh, public administration budget. So it's, uh, it's part of uh, Inforge. So the demographic change and uh, the retired persons about 
uh, older than 65 or in German 67 years old will receive uh, the, the rent, the pension, and it's part of the, the federal state in Germany and it will be paid by um, Beiträge. Um, Contributions. And so, <laughs> speak better German than I speak English. Um, so, uh, this is part of the model. And what you can see is uh, that um, um, it depends on the tax system in Germ Germany. If you are not going down with the uh, taxes on income and you have a rising income due to inflation or whatsoever, the, the, um, the tax rate will increase, the average tax rate will increase, and you are able to cope with the problem. Mm -hmm. But if you make a, every five year a tax reform, you are not able. So then you have a, a, a huge amount of uh, debt. And in German, they are, you are, the last tax reform was 2001. So now we have the effect of inflation on the taxes for about 18 years now. And the last step was pl plus 444 billion for the first half of 1990. So in the last five years, we have earned the, the federal state around 200 billion euros. So the, uh, the debt will go down strongly now. So it depends on the, no, not on the, uh, the number of retired persons, it depends on the tax system, I believe. So thank you very much for your report, and uh, I want to ask you about uh, interregional migration flows. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have data in the data in uh, Germany about uh, these flows? And uh, because in Russia the volume of incoming migration flows and outcoming uh, influence uh, on the parameters of labor markets, and so we uh, have to modeling these uh, flows. So you have all the problems you need. So it's not so easy. But, but we are we are not able to. Um, well, we have thought about to make inter-German migration have a combination to economic factors. We are not able to do it now. But we are able to model the com commuting between uh, the uh, 34 regions. And most of the um, movement is done by commuting from one region to the other. And after it, or it takes a long time, 10 years of commuting, if you are going to well, longer than one hour to, the, to, your, uh, to your place of work, then you will maybe change the place you will live. So this is uh, not so easy to build, but we do it the next, it's the next wave in our model building. So, uh, so we will learn from you, I guess. Are there questions or comments? Okay, so thank you very much, Ingo. So we have uh, Ekaterina talking about uh, interregional migration in Russia. 